If you have your testament or Bible, would you turn to the Gospel according to John chapter 14? John chapter 14. Now you want to get, get, get your Bible and your testament with you, dear friend, or you wouldn't know what I might say. And you want to keep your eyes, see if it keep, keep you to the Word of God. John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way. There are not two ways or two hundred ways, there's just one. I am the way, the truth, the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? You've got some of these rascals today, both in our pulpits as well as in our colleges, denying the deity of Christ. That it's never claimed to be God, that he was only divine, the same as any human being is divine. So on. Well, what are you going to make about this? He says, Peter or uh, Philip, have I been so long with time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, uh, how sayest thou then, show us the Father? You want to know God, see Jesus. Want to hear God, hear Jesus. Want to know what God does, see what Jesus does. They're one. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father which, that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth, E-T-H, he that keeps on believing on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. May the Lord bless with his own word. You'll not forget, dear friends, to pray for the meetings, will you? It isn't always possible to get to a prayer meeting these, these busy days, and, one, and, and so much to be done. But uh, I wonder, could we deny wherever we may be? The Lord's no, there's no, no respect of the places. If you're driving your car along the road there, you can be praying away like mad. But it says, watch and pray, so keep your eyes open when you're at that job in the car. Or boy, you'll be in the undertaker's room as sure as you live. But you women there, when you get your, when you get your children away, and you get your man out to work, would you not sit down and take 15 minutes to do a bit of praise? It'll do your body a whole lot of good. It'll do your soul a whole lot of good, and it'll bring blessing upon the meeting night by night. Would you do that? Now, you try to do that, you'll find the devil begin to get busy. Somebody will be rapping at the door. Telephone will begin to ring. The pot will begin to boil. Oh, the dirty pig will be at anything to keep you back from praying. He'll move earth and hell 
He'll not get anything wrong. He'll get things right. But to get the right things, to keep you back from praying. The devil's not concerned much about preaching. He's not concerned much about meetings. But boy, he's concerned about praying. When the weakest, the weakest sent on his knees, that's when the devil begins to tremble. And he'll move earth and hell if he can only just keep you and me from praying. He'll keep us busy about anything. We'll talk to our neighbors across the fence here, across the head, and we'll have a nice social time with them. Well, they'll deny that for at least this week. And just give your uh, 10 or 15 minutes in the morning to prayer. When would you do that? You man, at your work, you can be busy with your hands there, and yet you can give your heart, uh, give, give your heart up to prayer. And as we wait upon the Lord, he tells us, Glory to God, there's no, no, no knowing what he'll do if we'll only give him half a chance. You know, dear friends, before the Lord died, he left us a good deal of instruction. And about a good many things he gave us instruction concerning. The largest portion of the instruction was regarding the Holy Spirit, what he would do, when he would come, and that he would come, and what he would do with all his followers and all his believers. But he took up the matter of prayer too. And he has left his instruction regarding prayer. You know, when people come to die, or imagine they're coming to die, they're very sober. Everybody else around them is sober about it. And whatever conversation that they be, they be engaged in, it'll be a sober thing, a real thing. And you couldn't imagine it'd be frivolous or untruthful. You believe that it'd be sincere and truthful, whatever the conversation would be. Now, the Jesus Christ, before he died, he left his instructions regarding the matter of prayer. And I want to talk to you a wee while this, this evening on this matter of prayer. In John chapter 14 and verse 13, now here's what he says. Whatsoever ye shall ask, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Ask anything, ask anything in my name, and I'll do it. I believe he meant what he said, don't you? I believe he said what he meant, and I believe he knew what he was talking about. Some people say things they don't know what they're talking about. But Jesus knew what he was talking about. When you take the Gospel of John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, these are the final farewell words of Jesus before he went out to die for us men and for our salvation. And these words are the words of Jesus a few hours before he went out to die. Whatsoever ye shall ask, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, I'll do it. I'll do it. Ask anything, anything in my name, and I'll do it. Now, some of you are looking at me there with the widest credulity out of your eyes. Is Jesus Christ a liar? Are you, are you, are you, are you questioning his word? Whatever you ask, I'll do it. Ask anything, I'll do it. Is it a lie? Is he telling the truth? We all say we believe he's telling the truth. Well, is he telling the truth now? Whatsoever ye shall ask. Now, don't boil it down. Whatever is just like whosoever. Whosoever means everybody and excludes nobody. Whatsoever means everything and excludes nothing. Whatsoever, whatsoever ye shall ask. I'll do it. Ask anything. Now, don't boil it. Anything means anything. Whatsoever means whatsoever. The fellow gets up to me and says he denies the deity of Christ and denies his word that has been infallible and inerrant. Well, I, I feel sorry for that kind of a fool. But when a fellow tells me he believes it and then begins to tell me this is something, this means something else, you want to watch that right whether he's got a collar turned with the back, back of his neck or a black nightshirt on him, watch him. As sure as you know, he's going to pull it, going to pull the wool on you. And you hear them saying, well, whatsoever, it doesn't mean exactly that, you know. It, uh, it means something else. The dirty liar. 
It's either true or it's a lie. And to begin to talk along that line is to handle the word of God deceitfully. And how many are doing it? And then they'll say, well, if you'll get something, you'll not get what you ask. But he said, whatsoever you ask, you'll not get something, you'll get what you ask. He says, if, he, if your son asks bread, will he give him a stone? If he asks fish, will he give him a scorpion? If he asks an egg, will he give him a snake? And if ye, knowing how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give good gifts to them that ask? Whatever you have. Now don't buy it. What, whatever means whatever. Pair of shoes. Dress on your back. Hot in your head. A job. Healing of your body. Sanctifying your soul. Saving your soul. Well, man, whatsoever. Don't, don't, don't buy it whatever you do. It means exactly what it says. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. Ask anything. 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 Here's what I'll do. Well, boy, doesn't look like that in your experience. None of our experiences, does it? How many times have you asked, what did you get? How many things have you asked for and never received? That's a problem. That's a problem. And it's that big a problem that they've given up praying in many of the churches now. Because when you're in church up in Balamina there, they have what they don't call the prayer, a prayer meeting, they say it's a meditation. And you meditate. And you meditate. <laughs> so if you imagine sitting down at the table and the, the wife saying, you, you're not going to get what you're asking a meal here, you're going to meditate. <laughs> You're thinking it's about time to get you to come by the Dirk Patrick Bookhurst. Talking along that way. And yet, how do we get it? They'll say, oh yes, keep on praying, and you'll get something. I don't want something. When I asked my mother for a, a bread, a piece of good fire uh, and jam and put it on it, I didn't want a scalpel. I wanted a piece of bread. Whatsoever you ask. Whatsoever you ask. Ask anything, and I'll do it. Well, is that happening in your life? He that asks it, find it. He that seeks it, he that knocks it, it'll be opened. And yet, what a gulf there is between that and our own experience along the line of prayer. And mind you, I'm not talking to about unconverted people now. I'm talking about those of us who are washed in the blood and born of the Spirit I, along this man. Why have you given up praying in your life? If I ask today, how many of you spent ten minutes alone in prayer to rise to your feet? Boy, I will show you what a desert we've got here. Ten minutes in prayer. I had a brother-in-law, a professor in a college, and I, when I was running a church in Scotland, John Dern, had a, a night of prayer once every month. Half night of prayer once a week. He said, what on earth do you do? He says, I've never spent a night in prayer. There are multitudes of the Lord's people and that's what they think about prayer. Some kind of a lovely habit. Some kind of nice thing. Kind of religious thing. But you don't get anywhere. Don't get anything. So they quit the prayer. Wednesday night used to be the church's prayer meeting night. See what happens now. Generally a picture show. Maybe a missionary picture show, but it's a missionary picture show. Maybe a lecture. Maybe a Bible reading. Anything but prayer. Anything but prayer. Some of us when we get into a tray into a corner and get into trouble, we'll say, Well, I suppose I can do nothing else but pray. That's what we think about. Now I'd like to rub a whole lot of that in to you, friends. I was hearing about a a person that was preaching there one time and, and he said lovely things. But as I listen, he says, yes, but he's not rubbing them in. This is the booth of the Salvation Army. She said she believed the Holy Ghost to convict, but he expected me to rub it at the same time. Rub it in. Whatsoever you shall ask. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. He hear. Whatsoever. Ask anything, anything, and if 
Jewish. She does this. And he's either a liar or he's true. He means it or he doesn't. He can do it or he can. But that's what he said. Those were his dying words. These disciples were being comforted. He was going to leave them. And he says, Whatsoever you ask, whatsoever you ask, in my name, I would ask anything. I'm rubbing it in. Ask anything. He says, I'll give it to you. Well, dear friends, when I was a good deal younger than I am now, and when I was beginning to preach, that's a long time too, I got to the place where I was going to quit preaching and praying or else solve this problem. I'm not going to quit. Just praying and praying and praying and praying, nothing happened. Or getting anything that you want. What's the good of it? You're wasting your time. Making a fool out of yourself. And I wanted to be in an honest job and I couldn't stand as a preacher behind the desk and try to talk about praying and praying and didn't believe in. I was honest enough for that. Who and earn an honest living. But I got a solution. And that solution has studied me nearly 60 years. Reaching up and down the country, nearly every country in the world. But 12 times in the world the world. Help me fast. I believe literally the words of Jesus. Whatsoever ye shall ask, ask anything, and I'll do. You notice the, the sublime simplicity of the condition. You get some of these big rich fellows that leave a, a trust or a fund or a foundation. And boy, you see the legal statements that's made and the, pre the preface that's given to you before the document is read out. Why you have it? You have about five lawyers to understand it and then they'll fight like devils for the love of God and three judges to, to, to see what they're going to do. Now look, Jesus says, whatsoever you ask, ask anything and then listen. Here's the condition. In my name. Nine letters. Three wee words. If you've got enough brains to give you a headache, in my name. That's the condition. Whatsoever you ask, in my name. Ask anything, in my name. Says so you'll get it. In these farewell words, seven times he uses that in, in my name. That name had never been heard in heaven before, about praying. Something new. Something new. Jesus Christ has brought something to pass. Whatsoever you shall ask, ask anything in my name, in my name, in my name. And I will do it. Not a dirty bird, dear friend. Not a dirty bird. He'll do it. Now here's what, here's what the, the solution that I had and had and that's kept me going. What do you mean by a name, in my name? What do you mean? Well, there are three legitimate ways that you can use a name. Three legitimate ways. There is, first of all, the filial way. There is, second, the marital way. And third, the commercial way. Now, that is what to be quiet. The filial way. The family way. My name's William Patterson Nicholson. Oh, Mr. Patterson was 56 years minister of the Trinity Church. He baptized me in Bangor here. But the last before he passed away. And they called me after that old fellow, William Patterson Nicholson. I'm not here under a non de plume. I'm not in Bangor, John Jackson and Jimmy Thompson when I get down yonder in Belfast. Or Billy Morgan or something else somewhere else. No. Everywhere I go. I've got the family name. Legitimate name. I have a right to it. Why? I was born in the family. How do I know? My mother said one day, she says, there's your father. And I'll tell you something. That sheep has never brushed about that. And I've never heard seen any fellow stand up and challenge that 
that it didn't vigorously protect. I'm not an illegitimate. I'm well born. And all I have is the word of a sinner, saved by grace. Godly wee woman, my mother. She says, there's your, there's your, there's your father. Jack Seward, well satisfied, family name, had been wandering around the world and spending the life in riotous living. And I came home, just about a fortnight home. Now I was sitting there smoking, reading the paper. My mother was getting ready for the breakfast. And suddenly, suddenly, consciously, powerfully, Glory to God eternally. I was converted in a moment's time. Amen. In a moment's time. One moment I was a child of the devil going to hell. And the next moment a child of God and an heir of God in a joint heir with Christ. Don't look at me. I'm telling you God's truth. And I became a child of God and I'm in the family. And I have a right to the name. I have a right to the name. <coughs> Tell me, dear friend, is this solving your problem? Oh, God, my Father, oh, God in heaven, Father, would you help me? Would you do this? Would you do that? And nothing's happened. Are you in the family? Have you been born again? If you haven't, you're talking at the wrong skirt. You're chapping at the wrong door. God's not your father. Oh, I thought, I thought God was the father of everything. Oh, what in your life? I go down the street there and a wee fellow comes and tugs my shirt, coat tail and he says, Daddy, oh, you brought you, go ahead, I'm not your daddy. I'm not the daddy of every kid that's not around. God's not the father of every brat here. Isn't God the father? No, 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 no. God's not the father of the devil. There's not a, de a damn child in hell. And there never will be a damn child in hell. And there's not a child of God on the road to hell. Who's on the road to hell? Children of the devil. Who's on the road to hell? Children of God. Have you been born again? It's just as necessary to be born again to get into God's family as was to me to be born to get into my, into my father and mother's family. There's no other way but birth. No substitute. You can be baptized, catechized, confirmed, vaccinated, eat fish and fresh, and wipe your nose and say your prayers. But that doesn't make a difference. That doesn't change you from one family to the other. You may be as upright as those pillars. You may be as clean as a hound's tooth. You may be as decent and respectable as anybody that ever lived. But that doesn't make you a child of God. You can pray like an outpost. You can be as generous as anybody could be. That doesn't make you a child of God. Have you been born again? Jesus says you must, an imperative necessity, you must be born again. Born again. And when you're born again, then of course, you're in the family. You've got God as your father. Jesus Christ as your savior and elder brother, comforter as a sanctifier and guide and friend. You're in the family. I want to make that clear to your friend. There's a queer lot of people and they're going to hell, don't do it. There's a queer lot of people on the road to hell and think they're going to hell. Just because they're respectable and decent and church and all the rest of it? No, no. Jesus said, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, now listen, we have preached in thy name. Do you mean to tell me every preacher goes to hell? He does if he's not born again. And Jesus says, there's many of them not born again. But they're using the name, preaching in the name. Orthodox Presbyterian, good Baptist, Fine Lutherans, Episcopalians, Roman Catholic Jews or Gentiles, fine! 
خود یکی در نظم نیست در, در نظم نفهم منه منه سر چیز منه فرو کفر در پت فرو چرچ to the caverns of the dam from the sand singing to the weeping and the wailing and the gnashing of teeth that's a terrible thing isn't it so are you born again dear friend you've been born of God fearing parents you've been brought baptized in the covenant grace you've been brought up in a decent respectable religious way you've joined church Sunday school choir member oh fine an elder or a deacon of the church pillar I've been a caterpillar Never been born again, never been saved, never been converted. I was holding a meeting in the Presbyterian Church in White Inch in Glasgow one time, and in the after meeting I noticed a lady there was being dealt with by some of the workers, but she was in a terrible hysterical way. And after a wee while I stepped up and I said, hey, if you just stay to one side and pray, I'll have a wee word. And I took her hand and comforted her and said, Mama, I'm awful sorry for you. must have been some terrible tragedy in your life that has made you feel like this. I'm awful sorry for you. I'd like to help you. She quieted down a wee bit. She said, could you tell me what's wrong? Oh, she said, I've quit going to church. Ah, I'm sure you have, so would I, I was in your shoes. I've quit praying. Oh, she said, sorry, I know. I feel about that too. I don't believe anymore. No, indeed, she said, I'm sure you don't. I just would feel that way if what you had. What I'll hear about, I, I just feel the same way. So what was it? She was in the first war. She was a widow. She had only one boy. And he was got in the draft. Nearly broke her heart. When he left the home that, month, that morning, she got back in there, and after a while she just, she said, accidentally opened the Bible. And she came across these verses. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Ask anything in my name, I'll do it. She says, Father, I trust you for that. She said, he's dead and buried in France. She says, I, sister, will you tell me something? Were you ever converted? Are you saved? Have you been born again? No, she, she, I couldn't say that. I'm a church member. Say my prayers. Say, so who are you praying to? Our Father in heaven. Oh, no. Your Father's not in heaven. So your Father's the old devil. Not God. Well, why she says, isn't God the Father of heaven? Oh, no, no. Oh, no. God's not the Father of cats and dogs and pigs and turtles. And horses and fleas and bugs? No, he's not that. He's the creator. He's the creator of everybody. But he's not the father of everybody. He's only the father of those who are born again, have been converted by faith in Jesus Christ. And sister, maybe there's where your problems be. Oh, I prayed and prayed. What's the good of it? I don't go to a prayer meeting anymore. I don't bother my head, friend. I maybe put through a wee bit of it now and again, but I, it's nothing, nothing to it. Does this solve your problem? Have you ever been saved? Are you a converted woman or man? Are you born again? You couldn't be born again and not know it. You couldn't be saved and not know it. If you don't know or not sure, you can be dead sure that you're not. But thank God you can be born again suddenly. And leave the child, uh, family of the devil and instantaneously become a child of God. So that this, this very minute you can look up and say, My father, my father, with heart in heaven, you have a legitimate use to the name. Supposing Brother Flanagan and I had a business together and we were partners together in a business. I don't know what it would be, but supposing we'll suppose that that has happened. I'd go to my lawyer and say, Lawyer, I've got a partner. I'm going to enter into business with a partner called Clonic, and I'll need to keep the eye on him. Watch it. And I want you to, I want you to get a, a document here that will tie him up, just tie him up well, and that my interests will be safeguarded as a result. So Clonic goes to his lawyer, and he says, 
this fellow Nicholson here, we're going to have a partnership together, and boy, I'll need a wife. And so I want you to bring up a deed. A deed that'll say, safeguard my interest. Well, the time comes whenever we get together the photos. Lawyer here, lawyer there, planning it there, and me here. And they'll read my, what I want. And so it's either corrected or, or accepted. Flanagan has his red and corrected or, or accepted. All right, that out of the two they get, they get. Time comes whenever we get together the photos. Lawyer here, lawyer there, Flanagan there, and me here. And they'll read my, what I want. And so it's either corrected or, or accepted. Flanagan has his red and corrected or, or accepted. All right, that out of the two they get, they get one document, a deed of partnership. Sign the dotted line. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now there's where the business be done. And we get on fine, and, and they say, they, you get, things are prospering well in the way. And then by and by, Flanagan gets kind of what they call spring fever. And he says, I'm going out for a bit of fish. Go up the mountains to have some uh, recreation and tire rest and, and some fish. That's fine. But that wasn't in the deep mind. And by and by, I checks come back from planning. He wants money. I'm sweating and working away at the business. Planning is working away at the fishing. <laughs> Getting money to keep him going. And then I get tired and I say to myself, bless my heart, this is not, this is not what's in the deep. And so I go to the lawyer and I say, lawyer, I want you to go and get a, an injunction against my partner and stop his getting any benefit out of his business. So the lawyer goes to the judge and the judge listens, says, right, in comes the injunction. Now, Flanagan may, say, may sign all the checks he likes, but he can't get a penny out of that firm. The injunction's there. He ha- he's violated the deed of partnership. Friend, God's a, God's a, a, has a big work on hand. A big work. And he has got a, a company unlimited in this world to carry out that work. And you and I are made partners. We're partners with God. Not only the child of God, not only the bride of Christ, but a partner in God's big business. And that is the church. And I speak of the church, I'm not talking about Church of England or, or Presbyterian the Baptist. I'm talking about born again people. Wherever they assemble together, wherever they are, church. And I'm a partner with God in this big business that God has in hand. Saving men and women, blessing men and women, hastening unto the coming of Jesus Christ. Well, I get tired of that. Don't like teaching Sunday school anymore. Get tired of the choir. Get tired of the, an officer, but an officer in the church. Don't mind but an officer in the Masonic Lodge or the, or something else, but the, just the church are just getting tired of it anyhow. And so we're not in the business. We're not doing anything. In God's business. And you imagine poor old God's got to get that. To take that. And he's got to work for, he said to Jesus, my father worketh and so do I. That are working. God's a working God. And you and I are the partners with him. But we've got tired. Or maybe we've got kind of disgusted. Or maybe we've got annoyed at God for the way God does things. And we've quit. And still you expect to get the benefit. Just as truly as you and I could be wise about the commercial things God's as wise as you and me anyhow. And you can pray to the crack of doom, brother, but when, you've got to get, when you get busy, busy again, for God you'll be able to get something from him, but not to him. Seek first, not second, not third. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be out of tea. But you see... <laughs> Oh, well, I, I don't see that I should do this and this, that, and the other for the Lord. Don't like to t- take too much bother, or if it doesn't hurt me or doesn't interfere with anything, I might think about it, but just 
And then we expect God to answer your prayer. Ah, no, dear friend. If you'll get busy, if you'll take the yoke, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest, but take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And you'll find, you'll find. But what you see, what you ask for, you'll get. What you seek for, you'll find. Tell me, dear friends, does this solve any of your problem of birth this praying thing? It has for me. I've never known a man or woman that was a child of God by faith in Christ, the bride of Christ and active in the work of God that didn't pray and get the answer, that didn't ask and receive, seek and find, knock and it shall be opened. But if we're not doing these, well, we can't expect God to answer, can we? Just a word in closing. He doesn't say how. How he'll answer you. Will you mind that? Some of us think that we know better than God, and we ask God for a particular thing, and we tell God how it's got to be done. How it's got to be done. Can't do that. God will arrange about the how, and God will arrange as to how it's done. But you see, so many of us, we just think that God's got to do it along our way, for our peculiar notion. No, got to leave that to God. Second, when will he do it? I don't know. I don't know. You can't put your fist under God's nose and say, Lord, I demand immediately. Oh, no, 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 no. Jesus Christ said, if it's possible for this cup to pass from me, Father, but not my will, but thy will be done. You've always got to seek God's will about the matter. He knows when it should be done, and he knows how it should be done. We mustn't be impertinent and begin to tell God when and how, but assure if you and I are children of God by faith in Christ, we are really the bride of Christ and true to our vows, seeking to serve the Lord and serving Him day by day. Whatsoever ye shall ask, ask anything. When? That's what's up to God. How? That's up to God. Do you see that? You can leave it in His hand. He'll not be an hour too late. And He'll not do anything that's wrong. It'll be for our good. God working all things together for our good because we love him and it's according to his purpose. It's according to his purpose. He has a plan. He is the architect and he's working for your good and mine. While we're in the will of God and he's doing it in his own way, in his own time, and as to how, he knows best. I came across these words, listen. Unanswered yet, the prayer your lips have pleaded in agony of heart these many years. Does faith begin to fail? Is hope departing? And think you all in vain, those falling tears? Say not, the Father hath not heard your prayer. You shall have your desire. Sometime. Somewhere. Unanswered yet, though when you first presented this one petition at the Father's throne, it seemed you could not wait the time of asking, so urgent was your heart to make it known. Though years have passed since then, do not despair. The Lord will answer you sometime, somewhere. Unanswered yet, yea, nay, do not say ungranted. Perhaps your part is not yet wholly done. The work began when first your prayer was utter, uttered, and God will finish what he has begun. If you will keep the incense burning there, his glory you shall see, sometime, somewhere. Unanswered yet, faith cannot be unanswered. Her feet are firmly planted on the rock. Amid the wildest storm she stands undaunted, 
not quails before the loudest thunder shock. She knows omnipotence has heard her prayer and cries, it shall be done sometime, somewhere. Not a dirty with you, friend. As the Lord has blessed me in this that I have been telling you, may it be a blessing to many of you here that this problem of prayer has been a problem in your life in the past. We'll sing a wee verse together, and I want you to sing it with all your heart. Number 559. 559. And you, sister at the piano there, give us a tune 455. Brightly beams our father's friend. You take the tune, you work on the tune, and we'll work on the other. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything, everything, to God in prayer. Now we'll sing, and we'll just sing a verse or two together. You've all got a hymn book, sing never mind about your tune. Get the words on it if you can't get the tune. Come down. Who was a friend? We have in Jesus. Oh, 